I want to turn to a few scriptures. One is in Hebrews 11.35. I want to encourage some of our women this morning especially. It says there, speaking of those who moved by faith and who got victory through faith, it speaks in verse 35 of women. Women received their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. I just highlight that the scriptures brought out women and pointed out the victory that they got through faith in the scriptures. Then my mind came to Luke 18, just verses 1 to 3. We know the, the parable, uh, the woman and the unjust judge. I probably I quote this quite frequently. It says there that, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Praise the Lord. Again, a woman who was demonstrating persistence. Just hold on one moment. I have some noise in my background. Mm. Praise the Lord. Then in Exodus 4, finally, I want to give us some encouragement from this. It said, The Lord said unto him, speaking to Moses, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. The thought for this morning is to use whatever you've got. Use whatever you've got. Now, the, the scriptures show us that there's clearly a difference between man and woman. We don't struggle with that. Um, the Bible has different roles for men. It has different roles for women. It shows uh, that there are different characteristics for men and different characteristics for women. Some people say some of these things are cliched or you're passing judgment. But even science has told us that the, the, the brains of men and the brains of women work differently. There's more activity on one side of the brain than the other um, for men and for women. Um, they claim um, that women on, I think, the side of the brain that's more active allows them to process many things at one time. And so some people claim that women are much better at multitasking. There are men that can multitask, but there are um, things in life and in men and women that are proven to be different characteristically. Um, those of us who are married will very much understand the difference between men and women, sometimes in just the way we process the information, we process the information, we tend to be a little bit more rational, they say, and women a little bit more on the emotional side. I don't wanna offend anybody today, um, but this is just the research and what it is shown. The reason I wanna bring this out is because there are characteristics in women that have proven in scripture to be to their advantage. And I wanna encourage you to take advantage of your advantage. Um, I, I considered Sister Claire and her request uh, for her son. And, and, you know, as I begin to meditate on this, my, my spirit says, Sister, be encouraged. Be persistent. Don't give up. Because women like you got miracles. Women like you who wouldn't give up on that son, wouldn't give up on, on that relative, that husband. You know, you end up getting those answers. There's something uh, persistent. Some, some say this, look, women can be like a dog with a bone. They don't want to let things go. Um, when it comes to men and relationships, we don't make up and break up. If we break up, we, we probably don't make up again. Right? We, we're not very good at that. I'm just talking about men. I'm not talking about Christian men. I'm just talking about men. Uh, we, we don't run into arguments regular and, and can kiss and make up. That's not what we do. When we're finished with somebody, we're finished with them. That's it. Women seem to be a little bit different. They will hang on to things sometimes a bit longer. They will go back to relationships. But listen, it may sound like a disadvantage, but when it comes to the things of God, it's an advantage. This woman with the unjust judge, she was persistent and she wouldn't let the situation go. She wouldn't let the case go. And I want to encourage us to turn our situation over to the Lord and use everything that we've been given principally, whatever we have. To the Moses, it was a rod that he had in his hand. There was another woman and she had only just a a cruise of oil in her house, whatever. I want to encourage you that whatever you have right now is enough Hallelujah, Jesus. to do that you need next. 
You don't need another visitation. You actually don't need another move of God. You need to use everything that you have, all the persistence, all the dogged determination that you have, all that, that stuff in you that won't let stuff go. Use that for the things of God. Don't waste it on materialism. Don't waste it on, on worldly relationships. Turn all of those emotions, turn all of that passion towards the promises of God because the promises of God are sure. But sure as they are, you still have to do what the Bible says, ask. You still have to seek and you still have to knock. The promises of God are locked up. They don't just drop on you. The promises of God have to be accessed. The cabinet of God's treasures has to be unlocked and he has given us the key. He says, I've given to every man a measure of faith. Every man has a measure of faith to work with to get victory. So you have to take advantage of your advantage. You're a stubborn person. Turn your stubbornness to the word of God. Turn it over. If you have selfish traits and you, you kind of battle your selfishness, well, shut the door behind you. Amen. And run into Christ. Try and get deeper. Try and get higher. Use everything that you have to get closer to God. I've written here that when you have poured out everything, you trigger the release of all that God has. Right? When you pour out everything that you have, you trigger God to release everything that he has. All that he's looking for is everything that you are and everything that you have and everything that you can give. When we have fully poured out, we are saying to God, there's nothing more that I can do. And he says, right now, I'm ready to take over. You have prayed. You have been consistent. You have kept coming to me. You will not leave me alone. God said, how much more in the end of that parable will I not avenge my elect who cry before me day and night? Yea, he says, I will avenge them speedily. We cannot forget the persistence principle. We talked about it before, but don't forget it. There's a, a persistent principle that comes with the kingdom of God, that how, and that's how we get answers. I put here, don't let unanswered prayer make you lose heart. The beginning of that verse says, he spoke this parable that men are always to pray and not to faint. In another version, it says that men should always pray and not lose heart. Don't let unanswered prayer make you lose heart. God is sometimes testing your faith. He's testing your strength. He's testing your belief. He's testing your confidence. Well, do you believe in God or not? Don't let the fact that prayers don't get answers make you feel sad and downcast. He says, the reason I'm giving you this parable is that you wouldn't lose heart. I'm telling you this so that you'd understand that there are answers that come only through dogged persistence, only through having people that will not let go and will not give up. The woman understood that the judge was the one that had the power to pass the judgment, to release. He had the power to release a situation. So go to the one who has the power to turn your situation around. Sometimes we have, we have gone to the wrong people. We are complaining and we're murmuring. Go to the judge. We have a just, this judge was unjust. <laughs> we have a just judge. And we have a God who has given us exceeding great and precious promises. Don't look down on what is in your hands. Don't look down on what is in your house. All right. Sometimes we think, we think next year I'm going to be a, a stronger Christian. By this time next year, I'll be this. And we always defer um, better places and, and greater strength to another era in our life that we're not in yet. We always defer better for another day. Well, no, better from today because I have everything in my house to get victory. I have everything I need in my grasp. I don't need anyone to give me another word. I don't need anyone to, to, to give me another um, bit of inspiration. I Listen, look around. Look at your hands. Look at your feet. Look at yourself today. Everything that you have within you right now is enough to break you through to the next area of, of deliverance and breakthrough. The enemy wants to always put down what you have. Oh, I don't have anything. I'm not strong enough. I'm not good enough. Uh, only if this happens, then things will be better. Always waiting for one more thing to take place for your life to be better. It's already happened. Jesus went to the cross and he says it's done. Finished. Now I've got all the ingredients for victory. You know, listen, you can have all the ingredients in your kitchen for a great meal. But if you don't get in there and cook it, you're not going to get nothing to eat. You can have all the elements for a great meal. But unless you get in that place, turn on the cooker, put something Get this in the Bible says the word of God didn't profit them because they didn't mix it with faith, right? You got to get into faith's kitchen and start Amen. mixing things up, 
Start putting things together. Amen. Put some faith behind your prayer. Start speaking things into the atmosphere. Stop talking about what you, what you, what you want to happen, what you hope will happen, and begin to speak it in Jesus' name. Begin to claim the things that God has said are already yours. Walk in the confidence of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Put your faith on the word. Don't put your faith in a man. Put your faith in Christ. Put your faith in the word of God. I put here, stop waiting for a new delivery. You already have what you need for your next breakthrough. You already have what you need for your next breakthrough. What you need to do now is put it all together. Put the faith, the prayer, the, the worship, the praise. Put it all together and watch God do something great for you. I started a devotion this week. My wife asked me to... Um, to structure it, right? Um, some of you, you know, you'll always hear me talking about having family devotions, and I usually just grab the scripture of the day, and uh, I've been reading Exodus, and my wife says, you know, just go through a book, give um, give us a bit more structure to this devotion. Um, so I says, okay, we'll we'll do Exodus, and there's me thinking I was gonna just, uh, you know, take my kids through this. Let me tell you, last night we got together to do devotion, and my children preached to me. I'm telling you. My children, they, they held the whole devotion. And I'm telling you, when I tell you they fed me last night, I left strengthened when they start feeding me the word. Let me tell you, let me just give you some of the word that my daughter preached to us last night. We are talking about Exodus 1. And we did it two days ago, and we were going to go to Exodus 2. But she came back and says, you know, I have something else to say on this word. Because we were saying, um, sometimes the enemy's paranoid. We saw the Pharaoh was a bit, he, he said, look at these people, they're getting too great in number. Um, we're going to have to do something about it and, and deal with them wisely. And uh, she came back the following day last night and says, you know, I know I said he was paranoid, but actually Pharaoh understood the potential of the problem. <laughs> he knew facts. He actually knew that this was dangerous, that these people were dangerous. And, and the thought she said was that sometimes the enemy knows more about you than you know about yourself. Wow. The enemy is making plans because he recognizes what you really are and you don't realize who you really are. So I said, my God, the church is like a sleeping giant. The enemy has took out so many contracts against us and put up so many strategies against the people of God. And we yet don't realize the power of what would happen if we stood up as one man together, what power we would have. Use what you've got. Recognize today, church, that we are more than conquerors i don't want one writer said this and i'll stop here he says don't talk defeat to me don't talk defeat to me i'm a child of god and i have the victory walk in strength take advantage of your advantage